Continuing on with meditating on the themes of last Lord's Day sermon regarding covetousness of a discontent with God's providence in our lives. How to deal with that? I said last week that the way that you cure hunger is not just by saying no to hunger. The way that you cure greed, your soul hunger, is not just to say no to greed, but to fill it. To fill it not with bad things which will harm you, which great greed for temporary things is. It's candy that will do harm in the long run and not, cannot provide any lasting pleasure. Anything that, that ties you to this life, this world. But you are to fill that hunger with what it was, what it's there for. What was designed to fill it, which is eternal things. Keep your eyes on the things that are above, where Jesus is, where your life in Him is, where your identity is. Set your sights high, set it above. But I didn't get to elaborate too much on what those things might be. What are these things that are above? I... I, I gave you the main thing, main aspect, which covers it all, which is Jesus. But when we talk about Jesus, we can differentiate in, in, uh, regarding different aspects of Jesus that we can focus on so that our lives overall are oriented toward heaven. Our anchor is in heaven while we walk this earth. Let me give you one of my favorite, one of my life passages from the scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Particularly useful when we are giving in to great greed, covetousness. When we are surrounded by things that would cause us to worry, like we talked about yesterday. He says this, when we are under these stresses, we do not lose heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. We don't lose heart. We don't give up. We don't despair. Though our outer self is wasting away, our outer self can waste away. It's going to waste away. Our physical bodies are not meant to last forever anyway. Our, all our physical surroundings are temporary. Everything was brought in a day. Everything was brought by truck, and it can go in a day. It says, for this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, they're temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. What are these unseen things that we should set our eyes on? First of all, Jesus, obviously. I'm going to move quickly. <laughs> Secondly, in Jesus, our Heavenly Father, our eternal citizenship. Within that citizenship, others who hold that citizenship, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, with whom I will have an eternal relationship, with whom I will share eternal fellowship. Eyes open to see the eternal bond, the love of the Father, Son, and Spirit that we will share together. The ability, the opportunity to invest everything, everything, not just for this time, but for the time to come. All of our physical resources, even the money that we have, we can invest it in eternity. It is our birthright to live for something beyond the here and now. How tragic, how temporary, how fleeting, how shallow, if this is all there is. But the wonderful teaching of scriptures, the scriptures is, in Christ, open your eyes. All of the things around you point, point to eternal realities. And the light affliction you face in dealing with these present things are working for you an eternal weight of glory. Persecution. A shot in the head. A light momentary affliction. The shock of the stop 
of my body function, in a split second, it's over. And it's working for us eternal way to glory as I look to Jesus even through that moment's open door. You see? From everything from persecution to death to your cold that you endure every year, most of us at least a couple of times, as we seek Jesus' face and fellowship with him to know him more in our daily struggles and daily, stu daily, daily stumbling blocks, obstacles, you're leveraging each one to know him better and to share him with others. Our eyes open to our re eternal relationship with Jesus, with the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the sharing of our fellowship and the increase of Jesus' kingdom. I could add to this so many other things. I could go into this very specifics, not just persecution, but serving the church and utilizing their temporary gifts for eternal purposes, like the, your ability to play music or to push a vacuum. I can go into all of these things, but loved one, everything can be lev leveraged, leveraged for eternity now. Everything, all the struggle that you face, the struggle of your studies, everything, light and momentary affliction working for you an eternal weight of glory in Jesus. May your eyes be open to the good things. The good things, like, this, like the life that you get to share. Look, the, 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 the one, the, the, the beautiful relationship with your husband or with your wife that you can glorify God with. Or in your singleness, to honor the Lord and to be able to be free to do things for him that you likely, if you were married, would not be able to do. <laughs> There's just so many ways that we can apply this. The life in Jesus is just so much better than anything tied to the here and now. They will tell you that you are impractical, but they are the ones who are not being real. Let's be real. Let's keep our eyes on eternity. Knowing that your temporary struggles, as you use them to build into Jesus and eternity with him, are Preparing for you an eternal weight of glory. May you be filled with these things. So what are the eternal things? It is who Jesus is and who we are in him. Let's sing his praise. Storm, 
in me Not because of who I am But because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are I am a flower quickly fading Here today and gone tomorrow A wave tossed on the ocean a vapor in the wind, I still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. You told me who I am. I am yours. Thank you, Lord God, for our brokenness, for our frailty, for our mistakes that remind us to lean on you, that teach us so many lessons that we would not learn otherwise. Help us to redeem this time that you have given to us for eternal things, to have our eyes of eternity wide open and never to force them closed never to allow ourselves to be tied down to the things which are seen, which are so temporary, transient. Keep our eyes focused on you, King Jesus, the eternal one. And from that place of security and eternal meaning and purpose, help us, Lord God, to live this day. In your way, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.